Good day, you are welcome to another edition of our class. And um, today we'll be talking about how to determine and connect solar panels to Nemtech energizers. Right. Nemtech energizers. Well, before we proceed, I want to appreciate every of our subscribers. I want to say thank you. And I have to go back to this very topic. I think there was a time, particular time I actually talked about this. But some persons, I feel, they still need clarification regarding this. And that's why we're going back. So we talk about it in details. So, I've seen installations where they actually connected solar panels to the energizer. But one thing I've noticed, most installers, they don't know how to determine the size of energy, uh, the size of solar panels that is, uh, should I say, adequate or that is enough for particular kinds of installation. So the kind of installation you're having, the number of hours that that uh, installation, the, 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 the system will run, will also determine the kind of solar panel you can incorporate to it. We are not talking about inverters here. We are talking about having a solar panel attached to it, how you do that. Okay, let me uh, make a sketch here of what we'll be expecting. Let's assume this is our energizer, right? Energizer. Okay, and we have our charge controller here. Mm -hmm. Now, for most of our charge controller, this is what you have. You have six terminals. Six terminals. The first one here can be um, solar plus. So solar, this is solar minus the, the negative sign of our ETS. Yes. And this can be your battery plus the positive side of the battery. And this is a negative side um, minus battery. Then this is the load. Plus for the load, and this is a minus for the load. Okay, now you can turn house on the screen, but that's totally left to you. So if you're using a P, let's assume we're going to be using a PWM still, it can be MPPT. Irrespective of the kind of charge controller you're using, it will determine how fast your battery gets charged. Then also, we'll be having, um, let's assume these are solar panel here. These are solar panel. A solar panel. These are charge controller. Charge controller. And these are energizer. All right, okay, one thing you should understand is then there's something still remaining with my be, let's say we have a battery, let's have a battery here. There's a positive terminal and this is a negative terminal. Now, most energizers, I've noticed um, for your energizers, the rate at which your energizer drain is commensurate, should I say, is proportional to the perimeter of that uh, fence. Now, let's assume we have an energizer that is to power, um, let's say a wizard energizer, we want to cover a one kilometer span of uh, fence. There's high tendency that this energizer 
compared to if you have a one kilometer line of uh, wire, let's say, the, okay, let's say the span is one kilometer the full, the whole span, and you have another one, maybe like, um, uh, if, uh, let's say, 120 meters, right? Or let, let me take this one kilometer off, and it's 1,000. So, so we know we are working with meters, right? So the span of, let's say, plot A is 1,000 meter, and the span for plot B is 1,000 meter. Let's assume the battery that was placed here into this energizer that is to power this is um, a seven amps battery, let's say seven amps or 7.5 amps battery. If it is put on, the same energizer is used to power this. There's high tendency that this energizer here will drain faster than this. Let's assume you power the same seven amps battery for this energizer, you connect it to this fence, a span of 1,000 meter. You can just project at the end of the day, you might get where it's going to work, um, let's say, let's, uh, uh, let's say three hours and the battery will get drained, totally drained, where it can no longer power the fence. But for this one, 120 meters, for 120 meters, this same energizer can also function, should I say, um, can function for another six hours, let's say seven. Six to seven, six to seven hours. So, so you it it means by the time we pick a particular, can I have the white part? Okay. By the time we having um okay that let, by the time we having this same kind of energizer powering this and this, you see this one gets drained in time, unlike this. So just like I think uh, energy energy loss, it is bound to happen that way. So another thing, what we now need to do is to understand why we are picking our job, whatever job you want to do, you need to understand, okay, fine, what am I really powering here? What am I going to use this for? Well, for how long do I want my energizer to run? If you're running an energizer and it's going to go around the clock, you should also determine if it's a, let's assume, is a, a remote location where you don't have any other source of power and you're only going to depend just mostly on your solar uh, solar panel then it's going to be different from a solar panel system that is okay fine i am um, i'm trying to um conserve energy i don't just want uh, my fence to just run on maybe my prepaid meter for example i want during the day the solar panel charges this, when it's uh, evening, I can switch to maybe mains in the house, apart from the grid or from many other source. That is another thing you need to consider. But one thing I always tell you, I've seen scenario where people will use this, a 20 watt panel, to begin to power an energizer. I know what actually happens after now, they don't even know that's the problem. Sometimes they come, they it's charging. Then I person gets to his side, sir, I did one installation. I put my panel, yet it was charging. But I noticed while I was there in another two weeks' time, I noticed this system was no longer powering on. It will, it, it will no longer power. Why? Because the wattage for this panel, for this system, is too low and not enough to, to power this adequately. All right? So what are we going to use from here? You need to consider, let's assume... Um, we want to power anything. For me, most times, what I always recommend for a fence that you're just going to use most times, you can say, okay, maybe you switch it on in the evening or something, right? That will take you to the break of day. If I have maybe a nine ounce battery inside this energizer, I recommend, what I always use, I use the 60 to 100 watts. The 60 to 100 watt uh, solar panel, right? So maybe I have this as a, the rating for this. The other thing I need to do, my charge controller. Then for this, we're looking at using, um, I always use the 30, 30 amps, 
charge controller. Okay, then my battery can be the 9 amps battery. So it is sure that if you're switching on by 6 p.m. in the evening, it is bound that this energizer, by the time it charges all through the day, you put it on by 6 or let's say 7 in the evening, this energizer should take you to, let's say, 6 in the morning before 7 before the, the sun rises again to start charging. It means this energizer should be shut down at that time. So it means during the day, I'm not going to continue to use the power, the power that I'm, I'm, I'm that is coming into the batteries during the day is not in use at all. I'm just going to save it. What if I now decide to say I want to run this system, run the clock that is two four seven, two four seven, two four seven. Now, I'm uh, considering changing this battery, the size of this battery that I said was nine amps. I'm not going to use this nine amps battery. So it means I'm going to use a battery that is bigger than this. You might be looking at the 33 amps. 33 to 40 amps battery. 33 to 40 amps battery. Trying to go around the clock. Now for my solar panel, in order for this guy to get charged in time, I'll need to increase this. I can go as far as using, I want, 120 watts to 150 watt, 12 volts. 12 volts, these are 12 volts uh, uh, panels. So if you say 12 volts, it means peak, you can have them at uh, 18, 18 to 21 volts when they are peak, right? So you need to use stuff like this to power this. So by the time this with the 30 amps charge controller, okay, no, you might need to increase this. Mm. Let's assume we're using a 50, a 50 amps, 50 amps charge controller. And this is the size of battery, 40 amps battery. So it means if this thing, this one charges this, and this gets full. So the more this one keeps working during the day, it means this one, is always having power to dispense to this energizer. So you can have this begin to run for days consecutively, just like that. So there's sunlight, the sunlight, this one charges, charges this, and you're able to run your battery. Note that this battery will no longer can no longer sit inside this energizer because it's going to be bigger. Just you getting the right gauge of cable linking this to the terminal of this energizer. So let's see how you can the connection for this very system. How do we connect this? Okay, now for your solar panel, these are the terminals we have. We have the plus and we have the minus. Okay, this is um, the energizer. The energizer, the terminal are supposed to go to the battery, right? The terminal are going to the battery, the plus, let's see this is the terminal coming out, and this is the minus. From the part from the energizer. So, what we need to do here is to first take this from your solar panel, take the first connection. Let's assume this. But mind you, before connecting any solar panel, make sure your battery has been connected. You don't connect your panel before connecting. Uh, you don't connect your panel to your charge controller without first collect, connecting the battery so that when your panel comes in, comes in this one will be able to balance the, so the voltage coming from here. And so we're having too high voltage from here. And you might blow this one out. So you must make sure you ensure that. So what I need to do first is to take the connection from battery, from the battery to charge controller, battery to charge controller. So that's... This is the plus, and this is the minus. All right. If this is connected, the next thing you should be looking at is um, the, what's the name? The plus. The minus, let's go with the minus first. Let's assume using the minus. Take the minus from here to the minus of the charge controller, the negative, mm -hmm. right? And the plus for this from the solar panel to the positive of your charge controller. Then 
this one is ready. Now the other part you'll be looking at, most times um, I don't like using the load output for this thing. I always prefer to take my connection still from the battery terminal. Because when this one comes in, this one automatically balance the voltage coming here. So then here, what you can do for energizer, you can as well take some um, some of your charge controller, they are programming, but you can program it what output you want here for this thing to run. Then you can also take your power from here to this, or sometimes you can also take from the battery. You can link from the battery to this one, the output here that the battery terminal here coming from the energizer, or you can take from here. But for me, I like using this point. So I just need to link from here, the plus from here, all the way to the plus of the energizer. Then the minus from here, all the way to the minus of the energizer. I think this is clear enough. So the plus here, before this is connected, make sure your battery is connected to your charge controller first, so as to balance any voltage coming in from the charge controller at that, at that point. So connect this first, connect this first, then this as a second, before connecting your low tall. Right? So I think this is what you need to understand. Connecting your panel to um, to an energizer. So like I said earlier, if you have a 3 amps um, battery, it should be able to take you around the clock each day. Why is why is the break is start charging, you know, and you start having stuff there for your energizer to consume at any time. So I think this is able to sort those uh, those questions you've been trying to ask, trying to confirm what's the difference, how you how you determine um, the size of uh, battery that you can use for your energizer and how you can connect it. This is just a simple con connection of how you can do that. All right. Another topic I'll be talking about after now, um, we'll talk about, we'll, come, we'll be back shortly. And that's, the very top, the, 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 the subscriber, they were asking, how can we do a four-sided fence? I think that'll be our next topic. So, till we we'll meet again in our next class. I want to say thank you to every of our subscribers, for those of us who have actually been uh, been there encouraging us, we say thank you, we appreciate you. Till we meet again, do have a lovely day. Bye for now.